When we're talking the Holiness Hall of Fame, one of the first inductees has to be Polycarp of Smyrna. And he's got to be one of the toughest acts to follow when we're attempting to emulate the saints as well. If you recall, Polycarp was Bishop of Smyrna and had been converted by the Apostle John himself. He was also mentor to the great Saint Irenaeus and buddies with Saint Ignatius of Antioch. This is like a who's who. In his book, The Fathers of the Church, our buddy, Mike Aquilina, calls him the most well-connected man in the ancient church. Though recognized for his loving spirit, Polycarp was not one to mince words. When the heretic Marcion, reveling in his celebrity, asked the venerable bishop if he recognized him, Polycarp replied, of course I recognize the offspring of Satan. I'm sure he said it just like that. Because of his piety and direct connection to the apostles, he was known and respected all over the Christian world, and not just by a laity. He was even consulted by Pope Anicetus to help resolve the date for the celebration of Easter. Polycarp lived a holy life and died that way too. In 155, at the age of 86, he was condemned to die because, well, he wouldn't worship the emperor. And they tried right up until the last minute to get him to recant his beliefs. But Polycarp replied, for 80 and 6 years have I been his servant, and he has done me no wrong. And how can I blaspheme my king who saved me? In other words, he's saying, look guys, I've been living this way my whole life. Why would I want to stop now? Thankfully, Polycarp's secretary wrote a detailed account of the bishop's martyrdom because it's pretty wild. One of the most famous of its kind, as a matter of fact. And what's really interesting is that it describes Polycarp's martyrdom as a kind of Eucharist. In fact, when the flames reached the body of the old bishop, his secretary tells us that the pyre gave off not the odor of burning flesh, but the aroma of baking bread. His martyrdom was a pure offering of bread, a Eucharist. About the martyrdom, he wrote, when Polycarp had pronounced this Amen and so finished his prayer, those who were appointed for the purpose kindled the fire. And as the flame blazed forth in great fury, we to whom it was given to witness it beheld a great miracle and have been preserved that we might report to others what then took place. For the fire, shaping itself into the form of an arch, like the sail of a ship when filled with the wind, encompassed as by a circle the body of the martyr. And he appeared within, not like flesh which is burnt, but as bread that is baked, or as gold and silver glowing in a furnace. Moreover, we perceive such a sweet odor coming from the pile as if frankincense or some such precious spices had been smoking there. When the executioner finally pierced his body with a dagger to make sure he was finally dead, suddenly a dove appeared, and so much blood gushed forth from Polycarp's side that it doused the fire. His secretary recorded that all the people wondered that there should be such a difference between the unbelievers and the elect of whom this most admirable Polycarp was one. Now, it didn't take long for the written account of Polycarp's martyrdom to spread all over the empire. In fact, it was the first of a new literary genre called Acts of the Martyrs, and it served to encourage persecuted Christians even to our day. So as we move through our Lenten journey, let us offer our penances, our lives, back to Christ in the same manner as the great Saint Polycarp. Let our lives be a Eucharist, an offering of our body and soul back to God secure in the knowledge that dying to ourselves leads to our resurrection in Jesus Christ. And don't forget, if you want to learn more about how you can lead the St. Paul Center's Fathers of the Church study in your parish or other Journey Through Scripture Bible studies, just go to journeythroughscripture.com. God bless.